What's going on everybody, it's Denver and welcome to my channel. So in today's video, I'm really excited to continue with the Meta Voice SDK. What are some of the key areas to learn in 2023 as a programmer? I believe they are VR, AR, and AI. In this case, we're going to be using the TTS service, which means that we're going to be capturing information from text and then convert it to a speech. To I'm also gonna show you how you can change the voices they have a lot of options available in there. I'm also gonna show you some of the settings that you can change as of today, such as the pitch, the gain, also the speed of the voice. So let's jump into my computer and I start looking at it. One of the things that I wanted to do for this demo is learn how to convert text to voice, which is gonna be helpful when I create a new tutorial where we're gonna be using ChatGPT to basically communicate with an avatar. So here we can do something like, what are your goals? for 2023. And as soon as I do that, I can hit send. What are your goals for 2023? And you can see that we can get kind of like a call stack of what's happening. This is basically bound to all the methods that the speaker object give us, which is this TTS speaker that I have in here. So I can do something like, what are you studying today? My friend. And then we can get a question mark, hit send. What are you studying today, my friend? So what if we wanted to change the voice, right? We can also go here and change it to Rebecca and then hit send. It might be a little bit what longer. What are you studying today, my friend? And it takes a little bit longer because it's making any requests. But if we were to type in what we typed before, so let's say that we wanted to say something like, what are, what are you studying today, my friend? And then question mark. And we can go back to Charlie and then I hit send. What are you studying today, my friend? You can see that, that happens immediately and that's because it's using some of the caching. I'm gonna show you how that works as well. So there's gonna be two main components on this. There's gonna be the TTS width, which is gonna be a prefab that you can add from that Meta Voice SDK. And if you scroll down, there's gonna be a lot of different options in here. We could also change some of the preset value here, like the speed, the pitch and the gain. Let's say that we wanted to change the speed and then just request that again. What are you studying today, my friend? You can hear that it's, you know, it's a lot faster. We can also change the gain, so it's going to be a little bit louder than it was before. What are you studying today, my friend? We can also slow it down if we wanted to just do a little slower. What are you studying today, my friend? So you have that, you know, all those settings to do kind of like procedural changes if you wanted to do changes in your game. We can also change the pitch. I can do that. What are you studying today, my friend? So the voice changes quite a bit. So we can also change the voice here and say, I want to sound like a vampire. And perhaps we can change this back to 100. We can do something like that. Hit send. What are you studying today, my friend? <laughs> that one is pretty funny. But you get the idea of how many different presets you can basically add an array of different presets that you want to you know, implement in, our, in your own experiences. You also have these cache clips that you can, you can see. So you can see Charlie here, what are your goals? And the reason why we're getting multiple lines is because we're changing some of the settings in here. So if you don't change anything, it basically reuses that information for what is in memory. It's also a runtime cache, TTS cache with different options, which I'm gonna be covering as well. You can also do an abort. So if I wanted to do send, what are you studying today, my friend? And then cancel right before it ends. You can see that on cancel is speaking got triggered and there is also, you know, a listener behind the scenes that it's basically bound to that. The other thing that I wanted to show you too, though, is some of these things are happening in memory, right? Like these W T T S W I T, which is text to speech and wait is the technology and then the speaker. But you can also use resources and some of these resources can use what's called a TTS preload setting. So if I were to hit, you know, playing here and we have some preloaded data that I added and this is just, you know, a phrase, we could technically delete this if we wanted to and, and just start from scratch, but, or you can add a new phrase. So for right now this says missing because we haven't really pulled that. Let's say that we wanted to add another one, right? We wanted to add another key and we can say virtual reality is amazing. And you get the idea that I'm always thinking about this, this technology. And then what you can do though, is if we go here to streaming assets, let's say that you didn't want your game to go out to the internet all the time. You wanted to cache 
some of that information and preload it, you can basically use this functionality. So we can do the resources and then preload settings, and you can do preload cache, and it's going to basically go out and download the clips. So as soon as you hit, you know, preload, it's gonna say download it. And that information is going to be all stored in the streaming assets, TTS. And if I were to double click here. Virtual reality is amazing. So you can see that those, you know, came down as actual. Hello, how are you doing today? Audio clips, so, so that works. So in that case, you could go down here to the TTS WIT, and then you can change some of the settings. So if you go down all the way to the very bottom, you can see that this is all streaming. You can also do preload it, which is what we're, you know, we're doing in here. So what are some of the requirements to make this demo work? So the first thing is I'm using 2022 that 2.1F1 or greater. This is what I use. They probably support an earlier version, but this is what I'm showing you how it works today, just to make sure you follow that. And then you have to create an account and an application and with the AI. And this is something that I already cover in the video that I'm linking above. I go into more detail about how to set that up on the portal, also within Unity. And then I'm using, in this case, I'm using the standalone voice SDK package on the video that I'm showing you above. Basically, I use the Oculus integration, which comes with voice SDK. You can also use that if you like. I just didn't need all that, you know, functionality from the Oculus integration. This is helpful if you wanted to use a different package. Let's say that you wanted to use the XR toolkit, such as the one that I use on my AI Museum, then in that case, you don't need everything from Oculus integration. You can just start getting pieces from, from it by using some of these downloadable packages, which are more standalone. And then server access token, you're gonna have to get it from, you know, from the WIT portal. And then you're gonna have to create a WIT configuration, which I also show you on that video. It's just a demo of, you know, the portal, if you wanna go into that website. And then as soon as you bring in the voice SDK, you're gonna get a prompt like this. You just have to add the servers, server access token and also the client access token among all the different settings that you can look at from intents, entities, and also trace. So what are some of the components that I'm using today? Well, the meta says that this is an initial release. They're gonna have a lot of different settings. To be honest, I was pretty impressed. I think I had everything that I needed. We had text that we can input. We have different voices that we can use. We have different settings within voices that we can also change. We also have caching mechanism. So adding that we configuration is gonna be required as soon as you add the voice SDK, such, a, such as I show you on the previous screen. Then the components that you're gonna to need to add are gonna be the TTS WIT prefab, which is located in this folder. And that's gonna give you some of the core functionality to convert text to, to voice. And then it's gonna look like this as soon as you add it, you have you know, the different index indexes for different voice settings. Also the WIT configuration can be you know, assigned on the request settings and there's other settings in there that you can also look at. So some of the additional options are going to be caching options and this one is very important because you don't want to be making internet calls all the time. So if you just wanna do that, you can say stream, no this caching is used. There's also a preload where files are gonna be loaded from the streaming assets like I show you. And then you can also use a persistence, which is going to be using the application device persistent directory until the files get you know deleted. This is not really recommended if you have a lot of different files, so just make sure that you keep an eye on that. And then temporary is gonna be similar to persistent, except that the application is going to determine when to delete those clips. And then this is where you basically go in and change those settings on the TTS dish cache. And you can also change the directory in there if you wanted to do that. Some additional components is the TTS speaker. This is what's gonna allow you to actually hear the voice, gonna grab that clip and put it into an audio source and then actually play it for you and handle all that automatically. You can also get that actual prefab from this location. Then in, in, in the TTS speaker, you can also change you know, the voice preset. You can have more presets if you wanted to change some of those settings manually and just update the you know, TTS width with the actual index and the actual voice preset. And then just you know different settings in here that you can look at some of the events that you can bind to, which is the ones that I'm binding to behind the scenes. And if you don't wanna add these two prefabs, the TTS WIT and TTS speaker manually, you can basically just right click 
on anywhere on the project area here and then go into voice SDK, TTS, at default TTS setup and it's going to basically add all these components for you. So I just did it manually because I wanted to walk you through how those were. And I actually didn't walk you through adding those manually but I show you some of those components individually. So additional things that I wanted to show you is how does the code work? How do we get the input and then send that through the voice? SDK and, and you know how we get that information back. So it's pretty simple. So all I did is just created a, a new mono behavior and just a serializable field with the TTS speaker reference. And then this is just basically UI bindings for the data and some of the events. And on the speaker itself, I'm basically binding to every single one of the events that they provide and are exposed. And then on the callback, you're going to get the speaker itself, which is gonna be the object and also the actual input. This is going to be basically the text that you're sending to the, you know, through the voice SDK to with AI. And then I'm just using my logger in here to display the information that we send. So I add a listener to every single one of those. And then the cancel button is pretty simple. I just, you know, cancel. When I hit cancel, I'm just going to set the cancel speech button interactable to false so that I don't press it multiple times. And then I just say speaker stop, which is going to immediately cancel and stop the audio source for playing and also handle disposing any, you know, any memory. And then the send input text button is going to be the button that I'm pressing to send this text. And I'm just saying, you know, as soon as I press that, I'm going to be enabling canceling because at that point we can cancel the actual request. And then I'm just going to call into a speak, which calls into the speaker and the speaker has an event called spe speak, which basically is the one that communicates with, with. And you can see it in here that I have the speak and I'm checking to make sure that there is data on the speech input text. I'm also calling the speaker that speak with the data that now has been populated. So additional components in here and things that I wanted to mention, TTS preloaded data, I show you how that works. They also have JSON low functionality. So if you want to look at more detail in some of the objects and how you have to serialize your objects in order for this to work. I will look at this TTS preload utility in Porto, which has all of that functionality. And you can look in here that the TTS preload setting is available in here and you know how the scriptable object looks like. And if you want to know more about that, let me know and I can give you another tutorial on how to preload a JSON file with a bunch of different, you know, phrases, sentences that you want to incorporate into your game. And then I just wanted to say that the full Meta Voice SDK is available in GitHub. Currently it's only available to patrons. So if you want to get it today, you can basically become a patron with this tier, which is the full source code Unity project. And that's going to really help me a lot in continuing to make a lot of videos. I have two different scenes, one that is called the Voice SDK demo scene that Unity, which basically allows you to call into a with AI and based on what you say, let's say that I wanted to change the color of a shape, I can map that back to a code that I have in my Unity project. And I can basically do a lot of things with that functionality. And I also have text to speech that Unity, which is the one that I show you today. And also a couple of requirements for your project. So that's honestly everything that I wanted to show you. If you guys have any other questions about this, please let me know in the comments. Thank you.